Oh, give me one second. Okay, I'm Jess Park and I am very excited to be here today. I'm going to be teaching you guys all about watercoloring um, fall trees today. So I'm happy to see everyone here. Thank you for telling me where you're from, from Baltimore, Oregon, Pittsburgh, Alaska, wow, Arizona, New Jersey. I am so excited to see that you guys are just from everywhere. That's so exciting to me. Um, anyway, I am going to be showing you guys today how to paint these trees, which is one of my favorite things I've ever done. Um, I love fall. I love how the leaves just change. And so we're going to be covering a few things today. Uh, one, I want to talk about uh, watercolor itself and um, how to mix colors. We're going to be talking about just uh, how to do some simple watercolor washes because I think it's important to learn these basics. Um, I can definitely just say, okay, follow me and you know, you'll know you be able to paint the trees, but you won't be able to do things on your own later if you don't learn these basics. So we're gonna take a few uh, minutes here to go over the supplies and then uh, we'll get started painting. So I'm just gonna switch to my dot cam here. Is it okay if you don't use the camera? Yes, you don't have to use the camera. I do wanna let you guys that there, know that there is a chat function right at the bottom of the screen. So um, it says chat. If you click on that, if you have any questions, you can type in your questions there. If you're noticing that that chat box is covering the video, you can actually pop it out and move it to the right um, and that should take care of that. Okay, Huntington Beach, well, I grew up in Norwalk, Cerritos area, so you are very close to where I was. Um, I am now in Napa, California, so if anyone was wondering. Today, we're going to start with, uh, we're going to be using the Aqua Elite, Princeton Aqua Elite Round 6 brush. And we also, if you want to, optionally, you can use the round two or round one. Either one is fine. Um, but mainly, I'll be using the round six today. We are using the Canson XL 140-pound uh, watercolor paper. And I'm going to start in the 7 by 10 spiral because I like to do my, you know, practicing and smaller things in here. And then our final project will be using the larger 9 by 12. If you do not have leaf green, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to mix colors today. So that's a big part of what we're doing today. Um, last or the next thing I want to talk to you that we're using, let me make sure that I'm just auto focused here. So let's do that. Okay. We're using the De La Rowney Aquafine watercolor inks, and I will show you what to do with these. Um, I'm using the Cad Yellow Hue, the Cad Yellow Deep Hue, Leaf Green, uh, Cadmium Red Hue, Thalo Blue, and we also have the Burnt Umber, but I'm gonna show you what, how to mix all the colors so you can create these different colors that I've done here. Okay, so let's see, how's the ink different from paint? So this is a pigment-based ink, and what's great about it is that um, it's very rich. The color is very concentrated, and it's already mixed out for you, so um, you don't have to do that whole wait time where you allow things, or you, where you squeeze it out of the tube, um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, wetting things ahead of time to allow it to reconstitute because it's already done for you. And what I, what I did uh, previously is I just put a few drops in my uh, Tenwell palette here, so just a few drops. And I like to do it in this order where I do the yellows first, then my reds, and then usually I do the blues and then greens and browns, but I did a little switch there. Um, you just need a few drops. You don't need very much because like I said, it's very concentrated. Um, and the first thing I want to show you how what to do is we're going to just um, play around with the paint, mix some colors, get used to our paintbrush. Okay, um, if you, as long as you have, you know, some of the questions right now are what if you don't have all the colors, we're going to uh, mix the colors. So you'll see what we'll do here. Okay. When we're talking about mixing colors, you kind of just, you really want to think about the color that you're starting with and then the color that you want to finish with. And so, for example, I'm going to say my, mm, let's say that my target color is this red here. 
And it's not that I'm mixing to make this red. I just want to show you how to mix the colors in between. And so, and then my starting color is the uh, cad yellow hue. So I'm going to start with this. And what I want to show you now is how we're going to make those in between colors. So if you look here on my painting, I started with that cad yellow hue. It's more, you know, this bright yellow here. And eventually I got to this red. And so I want to show you how we're going to paint it so that when we're painting the trees, you know what to do. So my starting color is yellow. I'm going to wet my brush. And by the way, if your brush is brand new, what you want to do is just swish it around in the water and just make sure that those bristles are nice and flexible because when you have a brand new brush, they do want the brushes to keep their shape. So they do have a little bit of that sizing on there to keep the shape. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is create a puddle of my yellow. So I'll take a wet brush, just get a very little bit of that yellow and make a puddle. And you're gonna do that here. And there isn't too much mixing that you need to do because like I said, the paints are already reconstituted for you. And to that, I'm going to add just a very tiny bit of red. And so you just want to take the very tip of your brush and you might want to wet it a little beforehand. The Aqua Elites are very thirsty brushes, meaning that they'll pick up a lot of the pigment and water. So I'm really just going to barely touch the tip of my brush and just get the smallest amount that I possibly can. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's very, very little. I'm not dipping all the way to here. Um, just so little bit. And that might even be a little too much. So I'll just mix it in now and then we'll get a middle color. Okay. And then we'll keep going. So we'll go here. And now you'll see we're getting more of these middle colors. And the more red you add, the more of that deeper orange you get. And we're kind of just gradually getting to a more red color. And you can even see already we're getting that gradient of colors. And so all I've done is pick two colors, but already I've created one, two, three, four, five colors out of that. And so we're going to keep going. And you see, it's kind of like this nice fall palette, much like what you would see if you were looking outside and looking at the leaves change. We have this really nice tree in front of our house and the colors. I am in California, but that tree does change colors. And every fall, I just get so excited when I see it. And now we've pretty much saturated that yellow enough that we've reached our final red there. And it's a little hard to get the tone or the hues on the camera here, but if you look on your paper, hopefully, um, in person, they are very different, okay. And so that's basically how you mix colors. You just pick uh, one base color and you just keep adding to it until you get the color you want. And now my, the next colors that I want to show you are um, here. I want to show you how we can get a variety of greens. So, you know, light greens and dark greens. If we want to start with uh, the leaf green, I'm just going to show you what that looks straight out of the bottle. And you'll see it's a very bright green. But maybe this isn't the best color for fall and you want something that's a little, you know, different. So I'm going to just wipe out my palette here. I have a paper towel. You can wash out your palette, but you know, if you're in the middle of working and you don't want to wash out your wells, you can just wipe it out. So I'm going to do that. And I want to show you what we can do to change this green and just make so many different shades of green. So the first thing we can do is lighten with, um, change it by adding some yellow. So you just get your puddle of green and you can use any green you want. And if you add some yellow to it, 
I'm just showing you different variations of what you can do with the same color or uh, different colors. So that's that. And then you can add um, the cad yellow deep and it'll become a more warm green because if you look at the cad yellow deep and compare it to the cad yellow hue, it's not as yellow, it's a little more orange. And if you think about um, you know, the color wheel, you think way back to when you learned it in elementary school. If you get a green and you mix an orange to it, you're gonna get more of a brown tone. And so here, my green is a little bit warmer. And let's say I want it even warmer than that. You can add uh, like a red, and I'm gonna add very little. And the question was, should the base color always be a lighter color? Um, it doesn't always have to be the lighter color, but you will have to add a lot more if you start with the darker color. Okay, and so I've created this kind of greenish, or sorry, brownish green, and it's so, you see it's a very warm green, almost brown. So that's one way we can do it. Um, but we can also make cool greens too. So I'm going to wipe that out. And the way you do that is you take the start again with your green. And you know, you can always make your own green. So if you didn't buy the leaf green and or you couldn't find it and you don't know what to do, you always you think back to that color wheel, yellow and blue make green. So you can make your own green. So right now we're just exploring. Um, don't worry if you don't have the exact colors that I have, just explore your colors and see what you can make. And so with that, I've created more of like, you know, this type of cool green. If I add a little more blue, it becomes like this nice, almost turquoisey color. And then to that, let's say I want a dark green, but I don't want it to be that cool. I want it to be like, you know, when you look, um, you think about like a pine tree, it's not this bluish green shade. So what you can do is go back to your color wheel, think about it, and maybe you want a warmer one. Just add a little red to it and see you've already got like a Christmas tree color. Okay, so we've talked about mixing colors. Next I want to talk about washes. So I'm just going to turn the page here. Okay. Jess, what would you say would be the main difference with using watercolor pens versus using the paintbrush or even watercolor pencil? So I am not familiar with watercolor pens, but I will answer regarding a pencil. Um, it just, the way that a pencil is, uh, it just, if you were to color on your paper first and then wet it, you will still see the streaks of your, paper, of your pencil. Um, the other way you can do is wet your pencil first um, and then dissolve it and then use it as a paint. I just don't like you always using a pencil because you are able to see those streaks and I would rather have like a flat wash than see the pencil marks when I'm, uh, yeah. You're using watercolor brush pens. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Is that, was that what your question was? I hope that answers your question. Okay, so let's talk about washes. So what we've been doing on this first page is we've been doing a flat wash. All the colors are the same all throughout the entire, you know, swatch that you make. So the next thing I want to show you how, is how to do what's called a wet on wet. And so what we're going to do is paint a little swatch. So wet your paintbrush, make a nice swatch, make sure it's wet. Okay, and then to that, so you can see I'm kind of showing you with the reflection, it's pretty wet there. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take a second color um, and make sure that you don't, it's kind of hard to say, you don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry. So if you were to add and try to do a wet on wet on the previous swatches, they're already too dry. If you were to make a giant puddle like this, that's too wet. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of wetness there that's too wet. So what you want, an ideal wash that you would want is one that's not puddling and not like lifting up over the paper where you actually see a puddle, but it's just like shiny. And so you can see the difference between the one on the left is a puddle, the one on the right, it just has a shine to it. And so that's a good time to do a wet on wet. 
So just take any other color you want, preferably not another yellow, because then you won't be able to see what you're doing, and just drop in a second color. And you can watch that. You can watch it kind of bleed throughout that entire color. And that's what we call wet on wet, because we're taking wet paint and we're adding, I'm sorry, wet paper and we're adding wet paint to it. So that is a wet on wet. And you would need to know, um, you would need to know how to do that for the next part. So that's, again, a flat wash where it's all one color versus a wet on wet, you know, graded wash where it's one color on one side, one color on the other, and it kind of grades and blends in. So those are basic terms that you'll need to know. Okay, let's go on to painting some trees. So um, I, I like to paint all different kinds of trees so we can get some different shapes. But before I do that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about light. And so you think about a sphere. So we're gonna pretend this is a sphere. And my light source is going to be coming in from this side. So I'll put a little sun here. So if you think about that, then you know that this part of it is not going to reach, you know, the sun is not going to reach there. So this part is the darker side. And then here you have the light. And so in the same way, when you are painting a tree, so now let's transfer that into a tree. Okay, and then we'll put the same, you know, sun over here. The light is going to come from here. So we want this side of the tree to be lighter and this side is going to be darker. And the same when you're thinking about a cylinder or like the trunk of a tree, then this side of it will be darker, this side will be lighter. And so that's just a very basic way to think about it. Okay. So now we're going to paint our first tree. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to mix some colors here. So I already have a green here. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that because I just want a warmer green. Okay. So we're going to do our, a very simple tree and then we're going to add to it to add more detail. So we'll do something very simple, maybe a little something like this where it'll be shaped like an oval. But the edges, you know, you want it to remain a little rough because you're thinking about the branches of the tree coming out. And so that would be the most simple tree and you can be done with that, okay? Um, and I'm just using back and forth motions. And um, if I were to show you how a tree normally grows, the branches go up like this. You generally don't see trees that look like that. So in the same way, your brush needs to be going in those types of directions. Okay, so that would be our most simple tree. Let's take it a step further. We're gonna do that same base. Okay, with the little up and down, back and forth motions. But this time, let's apply some of that sun concept that we were light concept we were thinking about where we wanna take a darker color. So to that green, I'm gonna make it a little darker. And you can do that by adding a little bit of blue. You can add a little bit of burnt umber to it, whatever you want. Um, that got a little dark for me, so let's go back. And to that, while it's still wet, you're just going to add a little bit of shade on this side, a little wet on wet technique. So that would be your next step, okay? Um, while this is dry, let's go ahead and do our trunk. So you can switch to a smaller brush if you feel uncomfortable using a larger brush. I'm gonna stick with my round six because it has such a nice point to it. Um, it just keeps its shape. I I'm just going to stick with it. So I'm going to use the burnt umber and I'm going to make a trunk here. And from there, I'll allow the branches to kind of go up. And 
maybe I'll have, and you, when you're doing a trunk, you kind of want to allow it to not be so perfect because they, they have bumps and they have little lines. Okay, so that was the very simple one. Okay, to our next one, mine's a little wet. I'm gonna keep moving on. I'll do a different tree. So while, I'm, while that's drying, uh, maybe I'll just pick a different green. So I'm gonna make, mix the yellow with my leaf green here. And I'm gonna make more of a round tree this time. So here, make it nice and round. And I'm Jess, still using What that advice would you give for preventing muddiness in terms of blending the colors with wet on wet? Um, so you kind of have to add it at the right moment. Um, so if you, let's go back. Um, so right now, this is like the perfect time to add. So I'm going to keep going here. And the thing is, the way that I paint is a very loose style. Um, so I kind of enjoy when it kind of makes these little mud muddiness, okay? Uh, but if you don't like that, you really have to wait for each layer to dry before you move on. So what I've done here is while that, while that was still wet, I went in and added a little more leaf green to give some more depth over here and shadow. And when that dries, you can, you can leave it like this if you want. If you want to, you can um, add a second layer, or I'm sorry, a third layer. Okay. So this guy is looking drier. And I'm going to make that color a, deep, a, dark, a darker green over there. Okay. So I'll make kind of a really warm brownish green. Okay, and I'm just going to go over that once more. And this time I'm adding little dots. And yes, some of that is blending in, but some of it you'll see will stay almost like individual leaves and I'm just tapping. And so, you know, when you look at a tree, you have shadows and you have light. So I'm just tapping. Okay, so the hard part about this is just waiting. If you want to, you can add more detail to this. But what I want to do is show you guys how to um, create some of that the the ink that adds the definition and detail and so because this one is dry and very plain i'm going to show you what to do so the strokes that i do with my pen are kind of like uh let me see if i can get in a position where you can see it's little like squiggles okay but you want to keep them irregular so let me see if i can zoom in if your paint is drying too quickly, then that means you need to add a little more water to your puddle. Make sure your brush is soaking up a lot of the water. Um, okay, so it's going to be like irregular. Some are longer, some are shorter, and it's just kind of, you know, going all around. Some of them have little curls, some of them don't. And so what you're going to do is outline this, but you don't have to do it so precisely and I am using an O5. Okay, so let me re-autofocus and I'm starting on this tree here. And we're just going to outline the parts of the tree. And it should be kind of irregular because if you think about trees, is that they're not, you know, the leaves don't all follow a pattern. So that's just the outside part. You can actually go in and add little tiny individual leaves here and there. Doesn't have to be everywhere. A few on the edges. Okay. And so, um, and then lastly, what you can do is add some details to the trunk if you'd like. And if you want to add shadow, you can. You, you always think about a tree, it's always darker here. So already we took that very, very simple tree. All we did was added some 
squiggles and then all of a sudden it is you know it's more detailed okay so this one is still a little wet and that's the hard part of you know watercolors you got to wait for everything to dry but i'm going to go ahead and um, add in some of those outlines here and that's okay if you're picking up the paint um, it kind of is interesting i feel like all right and then maybe you can even add some details within the tree itself and you take something that looked more like kind of like a blob um, which happens a lot especially when you're doing this type of very loose wet on wet painting you add some of those ink details and then all of a sudden it looks much nicer and then you can add in the trunk with a watercolor or you can just draw it in yourself uh, with the pen. So the question was, can I show some fully finished paintings you have done? I don't have any at the moment right now because we are limited on time. However, you can find me on Instagram and you can see all the paintings I've done there. Um, and, or not all that I've done, but a lot more. So we just, we have half an hour left. Oh, here's one, you can see that one. <laughs> Um, we have half an hour left and I am going to go ahead and start on our final project, which is the whole page of trees. So I'll do that. Okay, so we're going to start with, you know, you think about the fall, you always start with green leaves, they start to change colors, turn a little yellow, the yellow turns a little more brown than red until we get to the very dark brown. Um, so that's what we're going to create. So the way we do this is you saw that a lot of time we just spent the time waiting for the paint to dry. So we're going to be doing them first. Then when that dries, you add the trunks. When that dries, you add the ink. So let's start with our leaf green. And you'll see throughout this whole time, I'm, I'm just kind of mixing all of these colors. Um, to create the other colors. So let's start with a tree that's kind of on the more round side. So I'll start mine over here. And, and I like to leave some white space just so I can add the branches there later. So there's my first one, okay? Um, and to that, I wanted to add some of the shadow while it's still wet. So I'm gonna add a little more of my leaf green in there and do that wet on wet. And you can see on this, I just added it on this side and not on the right, because remember, sun is coming from the right. And then also at the bottom. Okay, so we've got our first one there. And then for the next one, maybe I'll add in a little bit of yellow, but not too much. And I'll make it a taller tree. So we'll start down here. And it'll be strokes coming up like this. And let's just fill it in, that's fine. Now imagine the branches are growing up from the main trunk. So that's the way your brush also needs to move. And I'll do a little wet on wet. Maybe I'll add a little shadow here just for some detail. Okay. Okay, next one, maybe we'll do a little smaller one. So again, we're getting a little more yellow as we go. I'll start with the leaf green. And I'm just gonna add it to my previous mixture. 
and I'll do a smaller or round tree. But to that, maybe this tree is now changing colors. So I'm going to go in with the CAD yellow hue and just add it to the top here. Just showing that this tree is now in the midst of changing. Okay. Um, let me turn my light on here. It's getting dark in my room. Okay. I do paint very quickly and that's part of how I paint. Um, and I, and it's what keeps its loose, you know, shape, uh, I'm sorry, loose style, because I'd like to keep it loose. I don't like to get too into the, uh, details too much. That's a different style of painting, which is also very nice, but okay. To this mixture that I made earlier, all I'm doing is adding a little more yellow. So this time, we'll make this tree more clumpy, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, and to that, what I want to do is this time add in the yellow deep as we are trying to make things a little more yellow. Okay. All right. So that's our first row of trees. I'm gonna see how you guys are doing. <laughs> If your paint is not dry, then don't pick up your paper. But if it is dry and you want to show me, let's see how we're doing. Brooke, that is very nice. Thank you for showing Blake. Arlene, very nice. I like that fourth one, the way you did the colors there. Thank you for showing me, Mary. Oh, wow, Steve, that's beautiful. Okay. Top two, very nice. I love that. And I love how some you guys have some of the nicest backgrounds. <laughs> Nan, I love that orange that you did up there and the branches look beautiful. Okay, so hopefully some of you guys were able to catch up and then we will go back to our next row. So to our next row, as you can see, we're getting a little more and more yellow. So let's add in a little more yellow this time. So we'll be mostly yellow and then add green into our trees. So for this one, let's do a kind of pointed tree where it's more of a triangle shape. And if you can't tell, I'm just making up these trees. You don't, if you want to, you can definitely look up, you know, trees and then try to recreate the shape. But I'm just making them up as I go here. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of green, just showing that this tree used to be green. Now it's mostly yellow. Okay, what you can do now is these ones, if they're dry, you can always go back and add in a little bit of detail if you'd like. Oops. and then add some leaves if you'd like. And it's really just like a tap, tap motion. Okay. We're moving on. Getting more yellow here. This one's going to be more broad. And I'm actually going to kind of tap this one, almost like it's, and I added more water because I wanted it to be lighter as I move to the right. And I'm just using a tapping motion again, um, just to show that this one maybe is a little more sparse. And if you add in with that wet on wet, you can add some shadow. 
And another thing is while you're tapping, maybe turn your brush a little as you go so you're not creating the same shapes with every tap. Otherwise, it looks a little too uniform. So I'm kind of like rotating my brush as I go. This one is going to be a little taller, getting really into the yellow here. Actually, I'm going to make it just the yellow hue. And let's make this one fuller on the top. And just using, again, that kind of tapping motion and kind of more sparse as it comes down. And to that, I'll add a little bit of the yellow deep. But I'm not quite ready to completely let go of that yellow. I'm sorry, the green. So maybe this one has tiny hints of green on this side. Okay. So let's move on to our next row. And I will move my camera down because I want to be able to show you the bottom of my paper. Okay. Next, we're going to go into um, adding a more kind of um, orangey color. But before we get there completely orange, we need to you get kind of like a deeper yellow. So I'm going to add to whatever I was using before here. I'm just going to add a little bit of that cad yellow. So use what you have and try to create kind of like a deeper yellow. And I'll make that smaller on this row. Okay. That one was a little more simple. And this is where I'm going to add in a tiny bit, just the smallest amount of that CAD red hue. So first I'll make my tree with the yellow deep and it's going to look more like up and down this way. And to that I'll take this orangey that I orangey color I made and I'm just going to drop that in. So your color of your tree should be getting more orange now. Yes, you can definitely use whatever brush you have. For this project, I'm just using the round brushes. We are kind of more in like a beginner friendly class here. So when I was picking the supplies, I was just picking something that would be a little more friendly for everybody to use. And so those are the only supplies that I actually have up right now. Okay, next to that, let's do another one. So you can see my tree is getting very orange. And it's like we've got fall on our paper here. And I'll add in a tiny bit more of the red so that I can do a wet on wet down here just as a hint to say, okay, the reds are coming. When you tap on the second, okay, so if that's happening, likely your brush um, doesn't have enough paint in it. So anytime you have a thirsty brush, um, that means that this brush is ready to pick something up. So you wanna make sure you have enough wetness on your brush, enough paint on your brush so that it can deposit it onto the paper because it's water, water's gonna go wherever there is less water. I hope that made sense. Okay, next we're gonna go into our red. So a little more red. Let's make a short tree. So a short tree with a longer trunk. So we'll do that here.
Okay, and I'm going to add in little leaves here. Now what we can do now is if your top rows are dry, you can always go back and add a little more detail to that. Or you can leave it as is, it's up to you. Now I'm going to do a fully red tree here. I did a little bit of, let's scoop that and scoop this. So the thing about watercolor is you always just have to think about, you know, the water itself. It's always about controlling the amount of water. Um, and that is really the tricky part and it comes with practice. So the more you practice, the more you'll get familiar with, oh, how much water do I need to create this effect? Um, how much water do I need to not create that effect? And so it really is just about practicing until you get more comfortable. Okay, so for the next part, what I wanna create is this color right here. And it's kind of like this wine burgundy reddish color. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my red and my blue, but I want more red than there is blue. Um, otherwise, you'll create a more purpley color. So take your red. It's okay if it's already orange there. You can see I just mix everything together because in the end, I do want it to be a brown muddy color. So I won't even bother washing off my pan here. I'm gonna take the smallest amount of blue because this phthalo blue is very concentrated. And just add that in. Add a little bit more. I'm doing this in little gradual steps because I don't want that much purple. Okay. So let's try that and see how it looks. And then to that, I'm going to tap in that color. It should be darkening on the left side because my light is coming from the right. Hold up the tree colors for a screenshot. So do you mean this one here? Is that what you meant? I'm gonna hold it down. Why don't I do this? I'll zoom out a little bit. And you can see there. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get a screenshot and then we're going to move on. So let's do this. Okay. Now we're going to make a more brown color. So to make brown, you're going to want to just muddy up your red. You can add a little bit of green to that. Okay. And then I'm also going to add a little blue. And if you're having trouble making the brown, you can just go directly to the burnt umber. That's fine. And so anytime you're thinking about color mixing, just go back to the color wheel and think about what's next to each other, what's across from each other, what colors are complementary, and which ones are not. And that will help you. Oops, sorry. All right, and then the last one, I'm gonna make it very dark. You, I mean, you can just use the burnt umber, that's completely fine. Or you can just mix all your red, blue, green together and make your own. Um, I'm actually gonna mix my burnt umber with the col other colors because I want a very dark reddish brownish here. And let's do something around here. Okay. 
So the hard part about watercolor is now being patient and waiting for everything to dry. Because if I were to go in now and add in the branches, you'll lose that definition because everything will just bleed together. And so, and we don't want that. So we're gonna be very patient. We're gonna wait for it to dry. I'm gonna see how you guys are doing. Um, and this would be a good, I, good time to ask any questions if you have any. So let's see how you're doing. Beautiful trees. Oh, wow. I MCG07 underscore 000. <laughs> looks beautiful. I love that, Edward. That looks very nice. I love the reds and the browns there. Sarik, thank you for sharing. Very nice, very lovely colors. Look at all of you guys got the color mixing. Barbara Smith, beautiful way to go from the greens to the browns. And Linda, that's very impressive. You guys uh, did so well from going from the greens to the yellows. It's very tricky. And especially if you haven't done it before, I'm very impressed. They look great. Okay, so the question was, can you put, if you put salt in the tree, what would happen is you would get these kind of stellate patterns, um, which, you know, is nice, but maybe not so much for the trees. Um, but I like to use that technique when I'm doing things like, the question was, sorry, if you can see the other tree picture again. I like to use that technique when I'm doing things um, like galaxies or if I'm adding texture to an abstract painting that's when I like to add the salt. If I'm painting a sky you can you can gently sprinkle a little bit of salt um, and that will create some texture and let me show you let me see if I have next week's picture here and I can show you. Oh, okay. Well, I don't quite have it. Well, this is next week's picture, but I am going to show you guys how to create something like this next week. Um, and we will be, I'll show you how to use salt and different textures. So if you look very closely here at the bat, you'll see there's, it's one color, it's black. It's the De La Rowney black that I believe they're lamp black, but I added a little, you know, a little texture to make it more interesting. And so that's what salt and um, things would do there. Okay, so. I think we can add our tree trunks. All right, so when you think about a tree trunk, everybody wants to make their trunk brown. But if you ever look at a tree, the trunks are not actually really brown. They're actually kind of a grayish color. So to create that, you can take the burnt umber and add a little bit of blue to it, a tiny bit, and that will just mellow out the brown. Um, so that is actually what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue and actually, I'm going to switch over to my round two. Um, yes, there is a recording that will be available via YouTube. Michaels will load it to their channel, I believe, by Thursday. So if you want to check it out then, if you missed any parts or if you feel like we went too quickly and you want to review, it will all be there. So, yes. Okay tips to how to keep track of color mixing recipes that you come up with. So the question is, do you have any tips for how to keep track of color mixing recipes that you come up with that you wanna repeat in the future? Yes, so you can create a swatch. So what you do is you paint down, for example, here, when I made this swatch, what I could do is write under it, um, uh, leaf green and phthalo blue, and I'll write it under so I know how I made that. Okay, yes, I will refocus, sorry about that. Okay, so let's start with our tree over here. We're going to create a little trunk and you can start the trunk here up here. You can start it down here. I'm going to start it a little lower and all I'm doing is just making kind of like a, don't worry if your hand's not steady. Actually, I want it to be kind of bumpy as I go down. So I'm doing a little shake. Okay. So you want a, a little thicker towards the bottom and then thinner as you go up and then the branches. Let me zoom in so you can see better. Okay. Uh, the branches from this trunk are going to go up this way and up this way. And you can see they kind of taper off as they get towards the end of the tree. And maybe I'll continue this trunk here like it was blocked behind this clump and then we can see it again. So 
So you don't need to add every branch and every stem because you don't see every branch and every stem when you're looking at a tree. You just want to see the, you know, the main shape of it. For this one, let's create something that's a little taller or skinnier. So I'm just gonna go straight down and maybe have a few that come up like All right, this little guy here, let's do um, a kind of curved trunk. So, and I'll actually make it a little lighter color this time. Sometimes you see trees that have a little curve to it. The main trunk is not right in the middle of the tree. Okay, and you can go back and add some detail to your trunk as well. And for the next one, I'll go straight down. And see how I said we're gonna leave some white spaces? Now's the time I can utilize those white spaces to have some branches coming out. The tree trunks, you can use burnt umber. I'm also adding some red to it at times or blue just to create different um, colors here. Do a really light one on this one. And we'll make it simple. We'll just do straight down because not everything needs to be outrageously uh, detailed. Okay. And we'll do another curvy one for this one. Not so much as a, of a curve. So for the thicker lines, obviously you want to press a little more hard. For the thinner lines, you're using the tip of the brush. To steady your hand, I like to kind of uh, keep my pinky down on the paper and that will helps to steady yourself as you're painting. And this was our sparse tree. For our sparse tree, have you ever seen those tr uh, trunks where it looks like it's a bunch of trees all at once? Let's do something like that. So we'll have multiple coming down this way. And you can see I'm just kind of making things up as I go. But if you really wanted to and you felt like you want it to look more realistic or like a specific type of tree, then Google, I like to use free images, you know, just put in like free tree images. You can use Unsplash, that's another good website. Oh, those are looking like, what are they called? Cedar, not cedar. Some tree people know what I'm talking about. All I did was add a little lines, details to the, I don't know, know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. I just added some stripes to the tree branches there or tree trunks there. Birch, thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Okay. Moving on to this one here. We're just gonna continue like this. And I am sorry that we ran out of time and we weren't able to add the line detail, but you know, it looks nice as is. Oops, okay. There, I and I'm gonna show you my mistake here. You can see here that I dropped the blob of water there and I'm not gonna cry about it because what you do is you just get your, your brush thirsty again. Remember I told you a thirsty brush will pick up the water and you just tap it and it picked it all up. I'll let it dry and I'll come back to it later.
Okay, so if you make a mistake, let it dry, come back to it. Don't keep, you know, working on it. Otherwise, you'll keep, it'll get worse. So leave it alone. And that was, you know, something that was hard for me because I'm not necessarily the most patient person. But after watercolor, I feel like I've learned how to be more patient. Now you can continue like this throughout the rest of the picture. I do wanna show you what you can do if you want to add in those ink details. You would just start with each, uh, each tree and you just do what we kind of did before, which was just going in and adding little details. Um, and it adds kind of some depth to your painting. I'm having a hard time talking while I'm drawing. <laughs> okay. And so that's kind of what you would do after, if you wanted to go in and add in those details. Now you don't have to, but would the lines be the same for all the trees? Yes, you can do that. Um, you can let me show you. You can make them a little different and let me show you. So I'll show you up close. Okay, so you can make them more loose in this, like this one here. You can make them more squiggled and closer together, such as this one here, and make your leaves kind of coming out. So they don't all have to be detailed. You can see that they're very different, each one. And I'll kind of do this slowly. So if you're taking a screenshot, you can do that. But this photo is also available on my Instagram. You can add branches in this way. Okay. All right, we just have one more minute here. I wanna do this one um, because this was kind of my sparse uh, tree. And I thought it would be fun to add in details. So, it's sparse, but I'm still going to give it some detail. Let me refocus. Jess, if it's possible, if you can write anywhere on there your Instagram handle, just because the chat is not saved in the recording. So it is right here. It okay, is awesome. Post it. It is Jessie Park. You can tag me. You can tag uh, Make It With Michaels. I saw some of your work from last week and it was amazing. And I was just, I was just blown away and just so excited to see that you guys were following me, um, following along in my class, I mean, and just to see that you enjoyed it. It made me so happy. So I love when you message and I love when you tag me. Um, I know some people say, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I don't feel bothered. I like it. It's, it's fun for me to connect with other people who are artists and enjoying the things that I enjoy. And we have another class with Jess next week about Halloween wreaths. So yeah. you can sign up uh, again at michaels.com slash classes. So next week, um, what we'll be creating, I'll show you different ways, and I promise we will finish this one. <laughs> uh, I'll show you different ways, things to create in a wreath and how to paint this, how to do some fall leaves. Um, and then we'll do some, let we'll do very, very little lettering, but um, it'll be included. Okay. And yes, so there's the trees. All right. Um, I would love to see one last time how you guys did. I'm going to zoom out and show you the final one here, uh, my little swap out, in case anybody needed it. Oh, beautiful, Brooke and Cynthia. Oh, you guys are, you have someone next to you. That's fun, like a little paint night. Elaine, thank you for joining in. Uh, and I love how you did the color gradation. That's nice. Katie, beautiful. Jerry, I love that. I love the little tree on your right, that skinny one. Steve, that is amazing. Very beautiful. And let's see, Leslie, I see your work there. I like the double trunks there, it's beautiful. Robin, those are beautiful, vibrant colors. 
Julie Nelson, thank you for sharing. I love that green at the top and how it just turns into that beautiful red. Shirley, thank you for showing me. I love the details there. You guys did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for joining me. The video will be available on YouTube um, and otherwise. Oh, Lena, that is very beautiful. Sorry, I just, I had to stop my sentence there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this chat now. So um, thank you so much. Bye.